Hi, I'm Madison Beer, and today I'm going to be taking Marie Claire into my library for shelf portrait. So the first book that I want to showcase is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I was very, very excited when I found this. I go to a lot of like vintage shops and markets specifically looking for books and collecting vintage books is only something that I've been doing for like probably two years now, but it's become like my favorite hobby. I walked over to this girl's stand who had so, so many and I was like, do you have any really rare ones or anything that's really special? And she was like, oh, I mean, yeah, I have the rarest and one of the most special books. And when she pulled it out and showed me that it was Alice in Wonderland, I freaked out because I'm a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. I have a song called Follow the White Rabbit that is regarding Alice in Wonderland. One of my favorite things about this book is obviously the book itself, but I love when in vintage old books, it's someone personalized this to someone that says to Jack from Charles Dunn. And I think that's so cool that I now somehow have this book in my hands and Charles Dunn if you're watching this, I, I'm sorry, I have your book. I feel like I have a piece of history in my hand and like the spine of the book is completely exposed. And I don't know, just everything about it is really cool and I feel really honored when I hold something like this in my hands. So yeah, this is one of my favorite and most prized possession books. The second book that I wanna show is The Body Keeps the Score. This is one of my all time favorite books. Um, specifically, I love reading mental health books and this book really, was the catalyst for like getting me into this mental health journey of healing and understanding my trauma and like working through it in a proper way. And I actually discovered and started reading this book when I was on a bit of a mental health retreat. It made me feel really seen. So yeah, I um, really, really love this one. It impacted me a lot. So to sort of say on the same vein of mental health books, this is another one that I really, really love and swear by. It's called Love Me, Don't Leave Me. And it's about overcoming fear of abandonment and building loving, lasting relationships. I was reading this at a time where I was really just trying to figure out how I can heal myself and better my life in ways that I felt like I was lacking. And this was something that I didn't even know that I needed, but I really, really needed. It just made me, again, feel really seen, understood. It made me understand how to navigate life and relationships, friendships, romantic ones, whatever it is, better. And uh, yeah, how I can cope with my issues. The next book that I would like to talk about is The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. I think this was probably arguably the first ever book that impacted me in my life. I was just touched by the whole story and I felt like it was really important to learn about giving and what that means in return. And just, there were so many aspects and lessons that I feel like this book taught me super young. And I actually have a tattoo, which is the little boy on my foot. I think it teaches us important lessons that we should carry out through the book. So the next book I want to talk about that really touched me was Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. This is something that definitely changed my life because I think that as someone who's struggled with mental health issues, I've never been someone who's wanted to say that I have PTSD because to me that was always a term that was very serious and I, I guess I guilt shamed and victim shamed myself into thinking that what I had gone through wasn't serious enough to be called PTSD. But this book is so affirming in the sense that like, even if you grew up in a household that you didn't feel seen as a child and like that is traumatic and you can have PTSD from that, that lingers throughout your adult life. And this is just about like, recovering those things, work with your inner child. I like remember picking up this book and I loved reading that because I was like, I definitely felt really hated for a lot of my childhood, specifically on the internet. And I feel like, again, I was sort of in this like victim shaming, like, oh, you, you aren't worthy of reading this book mentality. And then I was like, no, this is serious. And I think I do struggle with PTSD in a lot of ways. So this book changed my life. And if any of those things relate to you, you should read it, it's really helpful. So the final book I want to talk about is my book, The Half of It. Um, this comes out on April 25th and I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really proud of it. I feel like all the books I had mentioned previously were actually the reason that I felt confident or capable enough to even write this in the first place because I'm unsure of the place that I would be in without those. So I felt like writing something that hopefully could make other people feel that same way that I felt reading those books. And I feel like as human beings, it's only our jobs to learn from each other's experiences and hear each other out and have empathy for one another, lend out a hand of kindness. And that's um, really what I want with this book is for everyone to just realize that everyone has a story you just haven't read yet. Um, it's really important to me. It's very special. I talk about a lot in this book that I've never talked about before. So if you want to get your hands on it, April 25th. And I hope you guys love it. My favorite genre of books would have to either be poetry books or mental health books. 
The last time I stayed up all night to finish a book would have to have been mine because I remember we were trying to reach a deadline and it wasn't finished yet. So I had to literally stay up all night and make sure it got done. I think that my fans would have to be the people who give me the best book recommendations. I feel like I can go online and I'll have a bunch of mentions just saying like, hey, you should read this book. And they're always so spot on. Also at my concerts, a lot of my fans will bring me books in person for me to read and it's so sweet. And I always read them. I think I like discussing books the most with my best friend, Luna. She has read most books and so I like to talk to her in depth about the books that we've read together. I usually like to buy my books at vintage shops. There's actually one bookstore that if I can shout them out, David Kay's books in like Woodland Hills. If you live in the LA area and you want to go to the Valley to an amazing bookstore, I would say 85% of these books are from him. He just has an incredible collection that I love shopping from, but mainly vintage stores. The process of writing my book was really therapeutic for me. It was very telling. I feel like I learned a lot about myself that I didn't even know. And it was really fun. I have journal prompts in the book um, because in a lot of the mental health books that I like to read, I it would have sort of this calm response thing in it. And I felt like that was really helpful for me as a reader to stay immersed in the book and be attentive with it. So I wanted to do that. It was really fun to sort of figure out what prompt I wanted to write after every story that I told. So that was, that was a really fun part of it. A book that I've never read is Harry Potter. And I think people find that to be sinful. So yeah, sorry. My favorite place to read a book would definitely be in bed. I think it puts me to sleep nicely. I do sleep with the TV on. So if I'm trying to be good and not sleep with the TV on, I'll read a book. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video of Shelf Portrait. My book, The Half of It, is out everywhere on April 25th. And don't forget to subscribe to Marie Claire.